Right, well, with the bottom end of the uh, rather troublesome uh, Royal Enfield Bullet 500 engine that we've seen here recently, um, all the bottom end is back together down there. Uh, I could have just put the timing cover back on, but I wanted to take a look at the oil pumps, especially after what had happened inside the engine, and hopefully you might be able to see in there. It's a good job I did. This is the um, scavenge pump at the front of the timing cover and it's obviously managed to suck up quite a bit of filth from the crankcase when the big end has been failing so um, I'll be cleaning that out. I've already got the feed pump out That's over there. Hopefully you can see that there. That's uh, in good condition. There was a little bit of dirt in there with that one actually which is quite surprising um, but there's a lot of metallic sort of residue being pulled through and dumped there so I'll get that out and I'll also check and make sure that the scavenge pump assembly is in good condition and fit for further use and after that obviously I'll be chucking the filter away as well and it can have a new oil filter and then um, once I prime the new oil filter with fresh oil and I'm happy that the oil pumps are okay the timing cover can then go back on but I'll also be blowing all the oil ways in the timing cover through with an airline as well just to make sure that there's nothing lurking in there and then hopefully it'll just be a matter of putting everything else back together with any luck that's where we're at at the moment well here's the piston that I've decided to use um, to rebuild the engine that had the gudgeon pin circlip fiasco and the uh, worn out big end to boot and this is from a low miles 500 engine that was converted to 612cc a while back um, I've also got the cylinder barrel to go with this and I've checked them everything's in good condition I've had the piston rings off and checked their gaps in the bore and all that's good so um, I think we're good to go with this one um, crucially I've taken a look at the circlips whether we can see those there they seem to fit much further into their grooves in the uh, gudgeon pin boss themselves I would say um, compared with the one that failed it certainly looks that way to me and as well as that if I can show this I don't know if I can but there's actually a little bit of movement there available side to side on the gudgeon pin which is obviously a nice floating fit in the piston um, so it's not up tight against the circlips when everything's in position so I like that as well um, so that's what we'll be using that'll be going in there shortly and um, I think and I hope that everything should be all right for a while <laughs> hopefully longer than that the oil pumps also checked out well and uh, everything's been cleaned and put back together there and uh, the entire bottom end I'm happy with the old lot so um, we'll put this on put the barrel on and then it'll just be a matter of put the cylinder head back on and the engine will be ready to go home again and try again perhaps it'll be third time lucky just a further point of interest here um, I've got a pair of circlips the one on the right is the survivor from the uh, piston that lost a circlip um, that is that is the unscathed one that was left in the piston and on the left I've got the circlip from the second hand low miles piston that I propose to use instead and I've just checked the diameter of the wire that they're made of with this vernier gauge and they're both the same although this circlip did appear to fit better in the piston it came from than was the case with uh, the one on the right so anyway I've checked and had a look and I'm quite comfortable with the fit of the circlips in a piston I'm going to use the only real difference you can see is the angle of the ears the ends of the ears and sort of curve back inwards a little on this one whereas they point straight on the other one that's the only real difference that I can see um, but I just thought I'd show that their wire diameters are the same and everything but um, that really is the only difference that I can make out so um, anyway the replacement piston will be going in 
using the circlips that were with it. As I say, it's low miles. I've got no qualms about using a circlip again if it hasn't been distorted in any way, shape or form. You have to actually be pretty rough with them to sort of bend them out of shape when you're getting them out, actually, I've found. And um, in many cases I've used them over and over, even in the race bikes, believe it or not, one of that too. And this whole episode we have here is the first time I've had to deal with an escaped circlip in uh, my entire career, I would think, with motorbikes, which started in 1976. So um, I'm not worried about um, using a low miles used piston with its original circlips in good shape. So um, I might get some stick and some flak for that, but that's what I'm going to do and I'm sure I won't be losing any sleep over it. Just to round off with this engine, I'm just pumping some oil directly into the new big end via the crank end feed. I like to get about 20 or 30 pumps into there. Not only does it lube up the uh, big end a bit, but it also puts a small amount of oil in the crankcase ready for when the engine starts, that the um, flywheels can pick it up and fling it around and up into the cylinder and the piston and everything. So uh, it's always good to do that. Next, I'll be taking a rocket cover off and just pouring a bit of oil down one of them to sort of get a bit of oil into the timing chest and the cam gears and so on. I've also had all the sort of return oil lines apart and um, even the rockers actually, the rocker blocks, there was white metal remnants up there and in these banjo unions and in there because the scavenge oil on these engines is picked up directly from the crankcase and pumped straight back up to the rockers, great idea that, so any debris that's in there also goes up there. So I've cleared all that lot out, rockers, pipes, banjo connections, everything, all spotless. So, and I've put a new oil filter in the timing cover and filled it with clean oil. So, subject to the owner fitting the engine and filling the engine with oil there, it should all ready, be ready to go again. And um, let's hope that maybe it might be third time lucky for this poor engine. And it's all in uh, tip-top shape again now, so um, fingers crossed it'll be alright.